Hi there, this is Jason. Um, I'm going to give a shot at uh, just doing a recording of how I get through uh, the four period moving average for this for, uh, for this data. So let's get started with it. This is, uh, this is the data as it appears in uh, the Word document. So first thing I'm going to do is click on uh, the, uh, the table itself, or right click on the table itself, copy it, and then I'm going to get it into Microsoft Excel. So we'll start a a new workbook and then I'm going to just paste it into here. So again right click and just paste. Okay. So there's the data as it stands. Now it would be a lot easier for me to have this just in one set of columns as opposed to uh, you know one set of columns over here and then the continuation over here so I'm gonna cut my 2009 2010 data and then I'll paste it down here and that means I don't need any of these columns here anymore so I'm gonna delete oops didn't mean to clear contents I'm gonna delete these get them out of the way. Okay, there we go. Alright, so now that I've got the data here, what I can do is work on a four period moving average. Now, you're allowed to use Excel to find averages, so um, the easiest way to do this is to set up averages of each of my, of each of four um, uh, observations at a time. So I'm going to take my first set of observations. No, I don't. Okay, I'm going to take my first set of four observations and I'm going to find the average of these. Now, um, one easy way to find an average in Excel is literally just to highlight uh, the values that you want, and then you'll see down in the bottom corner it says that there is an average of 586 but I can get Excel um, to record this information for me and in fact this should work in any version of Excel even all the way back to like I think 97 so it's gonna happen like this in this cell down here in my fifth row so I've got my first four um, values that I want to take a moving average of I'm gonna put my first four period moving average in the fifth row and I'm going to type in equals average open bracket and then I'm going to highlight uh, the four data cells that I had before and then I have to close bracket hit enter this gives me the 586 it'll tell me that there's a little arrow or a little error um, if you have a look at the green thing uh, uh, I can just ignore this error all right, I don't know what this is doing. Okay, there we go. All right, so that takes care of one of my four period moving averages. I need all of these to be filled in all the way down. So to do that, all that I have to do is click on this uh, the cell that I just created. And you'll see that there's a little black box in the corner here. If I put um, my cursor over it, I get a little black cross. Double click when you have the black cross, and it finishes off all of them. So these are all of my four period moving averages. Just to prove this to you, let's take a random one. Let's take uh, the 511. 511, this one, you'll see that it's D6 to D9. D6 to D9 means that it starts at D6, goes to D9, and it's taking the average of these. That's exactly how I want my four period moving average to go. Four period moving averages happen after all four of those observations. So that's where the 511 goes, it's, it's after all, um, it, it's in the time period after those four time periods that I'm using. Okay. So now that I have these, I'm going to label these as being my four, oops, four period moving average forecasts. And I'll make this uh, look a little bit nicer, maybe center it. Okay. 
Now, just having forecasts is not going to be good enough. We're supposed to work out what the mean squared error and the mean absolute deviation is. So a mean squared error is um, going to require that we first of all have our forecast error determined. So how do I get a forecast error? Well, a forecast error is just the difference between the actual score that's observed, say this 540 here, and the forecast value, 586. So for my forecast error, it's going to be equals to, and then I just click on the 540, minus, just click on the 586, I hit enter, it shows me the difference between these two values. And then once again, if I just hover over this and until I've got uh, that little black box in the bottom, I can double click on the cross and get, every, get all my values like this. Now, if that doesn't work for you, in an earlier version of Excel, let me backtrack a little bit here. If I've got this first value figured out, I can just drag this um, highlighted selection down to fill in all of the rest of them. So I'm not sure if that double clicking the cross is always going to work, but dragging that down I know it does work. Okay, so these are all my forecast errors. The next column is going to be my forecast error squared. And to do this, I'm going to click on the first cell next to a forecast error. Actually, you'll notice that I don't have forecast errors in any of these other uh, areas over here. That's the way that uh, four period moving averages work. Or, in fact, that's the way that any moving averages work. You're not going to have any forecast values. You're not going to have any forecast values until after those uh, that set number of periods. So I've got a four period moving average, I get my first value at the fifth time period. So that's where the first forecast error happens, that's where my first forecast error squared is going to happen. Okay, so I have to set this equals to my forecast error, then I'm going to use um, above the six, I've got that little uh, to the power of, and then I put in the number two, so this is squared to the power of two, hit enter, I get 2116, double click here, that fills in all these values. So these are my forecast errors squared. Now all that a mean squared error is, is the mean or the average of my squared errors. These are my squared errors. So if I can find the average of these, I've got my mean squared error. So down here in this box, I'm going to say equals to average, open bracket, and then highlight all those squared errors, close bracket, enter. That's my mean squared error, so I'm going to label that as MSE. And maybe I'll highlight these so that we can keep track of them later on. So that's my MSE, my mean squared error, for the four period moving average. I'm also supposed to have MAD. MAD is my absolute or my mean absolute deviation. So to do that, I need an absolute error. Error and deviation are the same thing in this chapter. So as long as I have my absolute errors, I can find the average or the mean absolute error. To find an absolute error is really simple. It just means taking an error like negative 46 and getting rid of the negative you're always going to end up with positive values for absolute errors. Excel will do this for you. If you do equals a, b, s, that tells it I'm looking for the absolute value. Open brackets, click on the negative, or where the negative 46 is, close brackets, hit enter. It takes care of the negative. Now that'll turn negatives into positives and it'll leave the positives alone. So let's have a look at that. See, they're all positive values. Now I just need to do equals to average, open brackets, highlight all of these, close brackets, hit enter. This is MAD. That's my mean absolute deviation. So I'll highlight these as well. And one final thing 
is it's nice to have um, everything to four decimal places just to be on the safe side so once I've done all my calculations I'm gonna highlight all of the numbers that I generated and then I'm gonna go up to um, my uh, increased decimal sign that's uh, too much and so I'm gonna go to the decreased decimal now I'm at four decimal places so there you go I've got the mean squares error I've got the mean absolute deviation and I'm ready to do the same thing for all of the other um, types of forecast procedures so that I can make a comparison, find the lowest mean squared error and the lowest mean absolute deviation. But this takes care of the four period moving average. I just want to check on one thing. Let's go back to uh, the Word document. Okay, so it says um, in your report, you're required to include Part A, analysis of each of the four models that includes their forecasts for the past quarters, we've done that, and the mean squared error and MAD, mean absolute deviation results, based on historical forecasts. When you calculate MSE and MAD, use the largest meaningful sets of periods for each model. We did that. Great. We can't do Part B until we've done that for all four of these, all four of these different uh, sections, or all four of these different procedures. So we did the four period moving average. Um, my next video is going to be for exponential smoothing, and then there's going to be a linear trend projection, multiplicative time series model, and so on. So hope uh, hope that makes easy sense. But uh, if you've got any questions about this, please. Um, don't email me. It's it's well. You can email me, but I get to my uh, my Facebook wall posts much faster, and uh, probably over the weekend I'll just be checking those. Okay. So thanks and good luck.